Yo, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, helping you make beautiful websites quickly and easily. What's good, y'all? This week, we shaking them haters off with the Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. Howard Rourke is the only bra in his architecture school who want to shake things up. Everybody else just a bunch of by-the-book hacks who think builder design got a rep tradition. But Rourke don't flow with that mess. He got his own vision and don't give a damn what they think. Brother keep it so real that the school expels his ass straight up. So he head to New York and start working for an architect named Henry Cameron. Even though Cameron's rep ain't so hot among the big dogs anymore, Howard think he's the trillest architect in the game. Meanwhile, Howard's homie from school, Peter Keating, just got a job up at a swag architecture firm working for some famous rich dude named Guy Franken. Rourke and Cameron always making real dank-ass designs, but nobody really cares about inspired work, so they gotta keep on the hustle just to scrape by. Whereas that scrub Peter is able to stack mad grands just by smooth-talking peeps and designing them pretty weak-ass buildings. Before you know it, dude becomes full partner. Even though he accidentally murked the guy to get there, Peter feel bad, but now with bad feels this good. <laughs> yeah! Eventually, Cameron retires and Rourke try to do his own thing. But that don't last long because he just keep it so damn real with his customers, telling them he don't give a sh about what they want is his design or nothing. Eventually, he got to get down and dirty and start grinding hard at a granite quarry owned by Peter's boss, Franken. Peter been busy too, busy creeping on Franken's daughter, Dominique. Rourke see Dom and they start vibing each other. Then one night, Rourke go to the fat crib she's staying at and rapes her. Though she say later, maybe it was just what she wanted. That's what the book say. So she tried to find Rourke looking for another go, but brother dipped out to New York to design another building. Dominique ends up heading to the city too, and finally figure out that Rourke ain't just some granite quarry hustler. As a girl who knows a thing or two about architecture, she thinks his work is off the chain. They start hooking up on a DL, but in her public life, she tried to destroy Rourke's career. Girl got a serious hater streak to her. But she ain't the only one. There be this writer dude named Ellsworth M. Tui who trying to ruin Howard's mm. rep. All this mess cause both of them can't stand how he can stay so legit in a world full of posers and fakers. Tui comes up with a plan to break Rourke once and for all. He convinces some dumbass to hire Rourke to build a temple and then sue him after he see what Rourke built. Up in court, all the top dogs of architecture roll up to that stand and they just run their mouths talking shit about Rourke. Dominique don't say nothing, but on the inside, she know Rourke is the only real deal up in that courtroom. When Rourke lose the case and end up cashed out on the struggle again, Dominique says, man, f it. If I live in a world where real people get shit on and hacks get the good life, then I'm just gonna do the worst damn thing I can think of. First, no more Rourke booty calls on the reg, and second, I'm gonna marry that bitch ass Peter Keaton. Later, Dominique meet this rich newspaper man named Gail Winer. Dude's so in the dumb that he literally buys her from Peter. Winer thinks Rourke's work is really fly, so they become boys, even though he don't know nothing about what went down between him and his woman. Eventually, Keaton lose all his rep and everybody starts seeing him for the tool he is. Boy gets one last shot at a housing project and realize he need Rourke if he gonna do it right. Rourke agreed to help a brother out under two conditions. Number one, they gotta do it his way, and number two, he stays anonymous. They shake on it, but later Rourke find out that they mess with his vision. So what does he do? He burns that mother down. The whole damn country hating on Howard now, but at this point, he just used to it. Winan finally step up and defends his bro in the newspaper. But when the heat comes down and Winan gotta choose between Rourke or his business, he like, Rourke who? And throws his ass under the bus. Seems like it's all over for Rourke. But at the trial, he rocks the mic, saying how important it is to be true to nobody else but yourself. The jury lets him off, Rourke and Dominique become a thing again, and Winan asks him to build one more building. A building so tight, it gonna rep all the noble things about mankind. When it comes to keeping it 100 all day, every day, it just don't get no realer than Howard Rourke. Matter of fact, Rand say the reason she wrote this book was to betray the most legit man you can think of, one that completely rapping her homebrew philosophy called objectivism. 
This is the motive and purpose of my writing. The projection of an ideal man. The betrayal of a moral ideal. As my ultimate literary goal. As an end in itself. To which any didactic, intellectual, or philosophical values contained in a novel are only the means. Objectivism preaching a couple things like logic, self-interest, capitalism, atheism, personal responsibility, and as far as reality go, what you see is what you get. So that's a tight philosophy and all. But what does this look like in the flesh? Well, first off, Rourke go hard in the paint when it comes to his integrity. To this dude, keeping it real means dedicating your life to one idea and everything. What you think, what you do, all of it, gotta rep this idea. No matter how raw I get when the haters start hating. He don't budge an inch, cause sticking by that idea is what makes you, you. Most people can't roll like Rourke though. Every single day the world asks people to compromise their values. And most just let it slide, bit by bit, so there ain't nothing left of their self. They die with every day that passes. When you meet them, they're not what you met last. In any given hour, they kill some part of themselves. They change, they deny, they contradict, and they call it growth. At the end, there's nothing left, nothing unreversed or unbetrayed. If being true to yourself is number one, then you can't be giving a shit about what everybody else think, like that boy Peter. People like him spend their whole lives worrying about how they look in other people's eyes. To them, it don't matter how things are, only how it seems. Whining is even worse. He ain't even tripping about how everybody else see him. He want power over him. But brother soon recognize that if you spend all your life trying to possess others, it's your ass that ends up getting known. Winan walked at random. He owned nothing, but he was owned by any part of the city. It was right that the city should not direct his way and that he should be moved by the pool of chance corners. Here I am, my masters. I am coming to salute you and acknowledge wherever you want me. I shall go as I'm told. I'm the man who wanted power. But on a real, can somebody like Rourke really exist in a world this crooked? Well, the show ain't easy when literally everybody, even your so-called homies, trying to take you down. I mean, just look at these haters. Do we messing with them cause he want the world to know that ideals don't mean nothing? Dominique think the world is too much of a twisted place for him to exist? And Wynan quite simply thinks a dude as real as Rourke just can't exist, period. Crazy thing is, it's him who ends up breaking when he try to live up to Rourke's baller status. Show Rourke's will, determination, and heroism are all pretty clutch, but that don't mean it's all good. There's plenty of jacked up shit about Rand's philosophy too. One of the worst things is the way Rand talks about pity. But this was pity. This complete awareness of a man without worth or hope. This sense of finality, of the not to be redeemed. There was shame in this feeling. His own shame that he should have to pronounce such judgment upon a man. That he should know an emotion which contained no shred of respect. This is pity, he thought. And then he lifted his head in wonder. He thought there must be something terribly wrong with the world in which this monstrous feeling is called a virtue. Look. I don't know what an ideal man would look like, but I sure as hell know he wouldn't say feeling sorry for others is bull or that being generous to others is for bitches. No matter who you are, where you come from, somebody along the way has helped you get to where you are. All OGs know that. Thanks for watching, y'all. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be sure to catch all our videos. There's lots more on the way. And if you're feeling like you gotta represent, what better way to do it than with a mad cool website made with Squarespace. Squarespace has made it easy for anyone to create one hell of a website. And they're giving you 10% off your first order when you use the offer code THUGNOTES. With some fine looking templates and easy to use tools, Squarespace has made it simple for you to create the website you want. And if that ain't enough, sign up today and you'll get a free 14 day trial to test it out yourself. Make sure to use the offer code THUGNOS to get 10% off your order. Catch y'all next time, players. Peace.